Tuesday edition. Crane and Company, already have to cough. <clears throat> Good start, get out of the way. Just that bridge? That was wild. Dude. There were cars what? on that bridge, weren't yeah. there? Yeah. Like, if you hadn't seen it, the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore got hit just by a ship and just collapsed, man. So that's like... That's sad. And if somebody, it's, it's horrifying. Somebody's afraid of heights. I hate to, hate to get the show started off on that note, but man, you can't see a bridge? Golly, that's... That's horrifying, dude. Tough news this prayers, Yeah, prayers for those people. The ACC countersues Clemson over the grant of rights in the conference. The NFL is making some more questionable rule changes. And Barrett Sally is going to join us to talk everything March Madness and a little bit of college football. I'm Jay Crane, and we're turning up on a Tuesday here at Crane and Company. Now, when it comes to diagnosing exactly what is happening between the ACC, Florida State, and Clemson, the easiest way to put it is it's really just the latest romantic comedy that's going on in college football right now. Now, <clears throat> if you don't know, just this past week, we had Clemson sue the ACC, allegedly out of nowhere, according to them. Then the ACC struck back, suing Clemson in a countersuit, and that culminated in the Clemson athletic director having to sit right next to ACC Commissioner Jim Phillips at their game in the NCAA tournament, a game in which Clemson has won as the ACC continues to stay hot. Now, it's really the perfect plot in a rom-com. You got the two jilted lovers in the beginning, Florida State and the ACC, they're in a quarrel. Then the friend slash ex in Clemson not only encourages the fight, but they sign up for it as well. They've got a dog in it. Now, the only thing we're missing is Ryan Reynolds, Sandra Bullock, and really a Netflix subscription. But the biggest question left is how does it end? Will they all come together and laugh it off as they walk into the sunset? Man, hell no. This is a dark rom-com. <laughs> Speaking of a guy that embraces the darkness, yes. David Cohn, former Michigan quarterback, my brother, former Western State Colorado wide receiver, Blaine Crane. Look, we've, we've talked about this. You know, it's gone back and forth. I'm going to sue you. You're going to sue me. It's like a, a public divorce. You, you, you quoted a scene from the movie Sucker. That's the movie I was thinking. Yeah, it's, it, I want you to indulge our, our audience and kind of where you're, where you're at on this. Every time I hear that Clemson and Florida State sue in the ACC, I think of this one scene in this car, used car salesman movie called Suckers, where the guy doesn't want the used car he bought anymore, so he tries to get his money back, and the guy comes in and holds the contract and says, is that your name right there? said, yeah, he goes, congratulations, you're an owner. Get out of my office. Yeah. Like, that's the situation we're dealing with here. I, I, I have the statement here from Clemson. So Clemson is claiming the financial penalties involved with the ACC's exit fee, three times that of their operating budget, are exorbitant and unreasonable. And the grant of rights, which gives the ACC ownership which you of signed. each member's TV media rights through 2036, unfairly restricts Clemson's right to maximize its brand value. Yeah, that's the point. That's why it was created. I mean, here, let's dive a little deeper. The grant of rights legal document signed by each member school of the ACC that transfers ownership of the media rights from the school to the conference. What does that mean? The ACC and not Clemson or any other school owns the rights to its broadcast of games. Well, the school signed this in 2013 as a reaction to the departure of Maryland to the Big Ten under the rationale that the grant of rights acts as an insurance policy that would prevent anyone from leaving the league during the duration of the agreement, which in this case is through 2036, because a school without TV revenue would have little value to any other conference. It was put in place for this exact reason, and now you're trying to leave. The argument people have been making to me is that, well, the ACC hasn't lived up to their commitment within the contract. I don't see any of that here in the filing. Yeah, it just seems like you're, you know, you you see an avenue there with Florida State. You're going to jump in it and try and press it as, as hard as you can. I'm just, I've gone back and I've looked over it. I just wonder, Blaine, if Clemson and Florida State are able to get out of this, what contract are you not able to get out of? Great. Like, like what does signing anything mean anymore? I'm not, and listen, like, I'm, at the end of the day, I think we're headed for two super conferences anyway. 
But uh, again, if you're able to wiggle out of this for the exact reason that you just quoted is, is why you signed this, then, then what contract is, is ever good? Doesn't it feel like you can just wiggle out of anything these days? Even if it's on paper, <clears throat> the wordage, the verbiage that you can, you can use, you can find a way. You can call a guy who knows a guy with a suitcase, who knows another guy with a suitcase. They can all walk in together. You can say a certain thing a certain way. Maybe you can get out of something. I agree with you. ACC needs to be done. It needs to be gone. It, 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 we know where this is going in college football. It's going to be two super conferences. That's what it's going to be. ACC, gone. Pac-12, gone. Everyone come home. Two groups. Let's figure it out. But what does that have to do with yeah, not honoring your commitment? Yeah, well, no, I'm not saying what anything about honoring super commitments. conferences, but then they don't want to, like... I'm still thinking about honoring commitments. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm saying you can get out of... You can wiggle your way out of a contract regardless of any way these That's days. how I feel these I, days. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I agree with that, but I do think sooner or later it's going to be two super conferences. Do y'all not agree? No, I, I agree, but, like, it's... Again, it's... To me, if you go to two super conferences, and let's just say you're Clemson, and you go sign up to be in one of these conferences, what does that deal mean? Like, at what point couldn't just three of those teams be like, no, well, we don't feel like you're living up to your commitment, so what we signed doesn't matter. Like, at, at some point, there's got to be a line that you cannot cross. And if you can get by this, when you sign the piece of paper saying, we're signing this so everybody can be protected, and then you break that, and and say well you're not living up to what you're doing like where does it end like what 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 keeps anything in place I'm a, I'm a, I'm not disagreeing with you yeah well that's the whole point of what like it just it's a joke and we've seen it in several areas I mean if you just look at so let's just say the transfer portal anytime there is an attempt by the NCAA to say okay these are the rules now at least we They're like no lawsuit. that you can't transfer every year you're in college no superior court in the sixth district says no that you're exploiting the student athlete yeah it just to me it's a it's a slippery slope like I guess maybe if the entity gets so much power that every, it's like the SEC. Nobody's trying to leave if you got enough money you can get out of anything like it just it's they smell we it's just, it seems like they smell weakness. Like they can just, like a like a shark in the water can smell blood from like four miles away or whatever. You know, I'm not Steve Irwin. I don't, I don't know exactly the, the distance, but it's just like Florida State smelled blood first. And then Clemson's like, hey, we'll help you out. If us two come together, we're almost as strong as, as the entity. I don't know, man. Which, it's it's just, crazy because right now, as we sit here, the ACC is, what, 8-1 and one in the NCAA yeah. basketball tournament? But the Pac-12 had a good year in, in football last year. Like, and, it doesn't and the, matter. And the ACC just had an undefeated team in the regular season that of football. That didn't get Florida in. State that didn't make the college football playoff. It's, you know? just, it's like, how are we even having a conversation about the ACC possibly collapsing? And, and yeah, I, I mean, I agree with you that some schools maybe smell weakness and blood in the water, but this, to me, is a a sign of, of strength. They had the clairvoyance to have rules in the contract to say, you know what would keep everybody here is if we sign something that takes their media rights well, away and now you want to get out. Well, again, it's not Clemson and Florida State don't have to win this. They don't have to just outright, y'all win, the ACC's wrong. They just need to settle. Just to settle. Well, we don't have to pay the $380 million or whatever it is to get out of the conference. We'll pay you $150. We'll pay you $150. Let's shake hands. Look, it's a bad marriage. Kids are done done with high school. It's a rom-com. Let's get out of here. It's just a settle is a win. Like whatever allows Clemson or Florida State to be able to get out without paying the maximum penalty. Because this countersuit from the ACC, it's not just, well, now you have to pay us, you know, the, the total amount to leave. But we want damages on top of that. Well, you know who else has a long-term deal in place now is the SEC. So let's just play this out. Let's just say in three years, Clemson and Florida State could get out of the ACC and they join the SEC or the Big Ten. Those, con those contracts are already in place. ESPN is not just going to magically pay them more money just to do so if they add another marquee team. Well, you no, look at what SMU is doing. Yes. Look at what SMU is doing. They're like, hey, we want to be part of the ACC, sure. but we won't take a cut of the money for the, for the first three years. Yeah. So I wonder if that's kind of like opening the door to it. Seven years or something. Well, that's what I find fascinating. Like, There's multiple avenues this thing could go. I'm just interested to see kind of how the movie ends. We want to know what you think. The phone line's going to open up 715 a.m. Central, 1-855-236-3228. Uh, going to get to the Booster Club. But before that, if you didn't enter our March Madness bracket at betonline.ag, I don't know what decisions you're making with your life, but you need to figure it out. Uh, but regardless of what you bet on, whether it's NHL, uh, I mean, we have NIT, college baseball. I can go through the list of sports. 
the NBA, the draft's got some great props on it as well. You need to be using betonline.ag. And when you use our promo code BOOSTER, that's B-O-O-S-T-E-R, you get a 50% instant deposit bonus of up to $1,000. So you put 1,000 in, they give you 500. They have the latest odds. They've got the best spreads. Easy to navigate website. Trust me, we use it. The Booster Club uses it. They are well within the trust tree. Actually just uh, built a hut uh, in Trust Tree Village, which we're really excited about. So go to betonline.ag. Use promo code BOOSTER. That's B-O-O-S-T-E-R. BetOnline. The options are endless, and so is the fun. Yeah, I made that little add-on right there at the end. I know you love it. Very nice. Have to have it. All right, let's get to the chat. All right, chat, hit that like, hit that subscribe button. We're going to start off with JT Brown, the $10 donation. Appreciate it, JT. Jay Tizzle. Look at the production quality of the ACC network versus the SEC network and tell me the ACC is living up to their side of the bargain. It looked like it was produced in my garage. Then See, I love how filings. deep y'all are diving here. Then cite that in the filings. Yeah, all no, I see I, right here is, I all I see that. right here is, uh, no, the grant of rights unfairly restricts Clemson's rights to maximize its brand value. That's the point of why you signed it, so that Florida State and North Carolina and the other schools couldn't leave you high no, and dry. No, we need we need and better you're stuff. You're trying to dog. leave everyone else high and dry. ESPN this- owns both of those networks, though. Does that contribute just like the ACC itself? Donating See, now them? you're getting too far. You're getting too far in the weeds. You're not understanding where they're coming from. The Clemson side. This is why it's great. This is part of the rom com. You're just you're enforcing JT, and thank you for that donation. What I'm saying, if you're a Clemson fan or FSU fan, you're finding every reason right now. Every reason, whether it's legit or not. Why, why aren't we in 4K? Why, why does this studio not look as good as the one that our boy Peter Burns is in? Why is Cole Kublik's suit more fire than anybody on the ACC networks? Like, it's, I'm looking for every, I love this. This just shows you the <laughs> insanity that is college football. It's like Leo DiCaprio, right? On, on uh, God, what movie is it where he points at, is it's it a, a, Once Upon a Once Time? Upon a time. Like, he just points at TV, he's like, look, ACC network, LED wall. ACC network? We basically got, like, antennas. Like, I'm putting foil on the TV. Trying to see if I can find the weather guy. I love it, JT. All right, let's go to Exiso of Fist. What is up, my guy? Is the success of Clemson and FSU due to the ACC or in spite of? If it is, in spite of, the ACC is irrelevant and deserves to go away of the dodo bird. I think it's a mixture of both, right? I mean, I... I Again, being in the ACC, you know, you look, that gives you Miami. That gives you playing North Carolina. It gives you playing Virginia Tech. You know, it hadn't stopped Clemson before from beating Bama and winning national championships. You know, I didn't hear anything about it when Clemson was winning at a high level. Obviously, I think this got kind of supercharged when Florida State didn't get in, right? But look, it comes down to money. Like, that's what this comes down to. Just like everything, Clemson Clemson is looking at South Carolina. And they're like, wait a minute. We're having all this success, but y'all are making $30 million more million than we are? Our fan base is as passionate. We may not be the state school. Florida State is, is looking at Florida. They're like, y'all haven't done a damn thing in a long time, yet we're going to be $30 million in the hole because it's every year. This isn't like a, oh, after 10 years, we're going to be down $20 million. No, you're taking $30 mil to the chin every year. How about Vanderbilt? Like Vanderbilt stealing. Yeah, look at Vanderbilt. They're look, stealing. You signed a bad deal. Yeah. You si- there are consequences to signing a bad contract. And 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 that's why to me another fascinating angle of this is I think both sides have a legitimate gripe. Clemson and Florida State and some of these other schools that are joining this are basically saying this is not sustainable for us to be able to compete at the at the level we deserve to be able to compete at. It's just not sustainable. And they're right. You can't eat $30 million a year to the SEC. And I don't care if the ACC adds Stanford or Cal or the math team from MIT. That's not going to help. But if you're the ACC, you're like, listen, you're the best show we got in town pretty much. Please don't leave. And also, you signed your name right here. You sold your soul. Now I'm going to need that. I'm going to need it. So on both sides, I think there's some some legitimacy into what they're griping about. That's why, again, it just smells like, what, I'm on this side, you're on that side, both kind of legitimate. Oh, I signed my name, but you're not doing your part. But let's meet in the middle, right? I'll have the kids on the weekends. You know, that's what it seems like. I'm okay if you're okay and that's okay. Yeah, that's exactly right. The top of your head is the hottest part of your body. It is. All right, let's go to Kennedy Seg. What's up, Kennedy? How quickly would you assume these two super conferences form if they do? Or do you think lawsuits are getting the ball rolling? 
the weak will die in these lawsuits. The SEC, nobody is suing the SEC. Nobody's suing the Big Ten. I think right now the Big 12s, the, the Big 12 to me is obviously in the best spot outside of the SEC and the Big Ten, right? Because if you think about the Big 12, everybody's happy they're there now. Texas and Oklahoma, you took the brunt of your big dogs leaving. Regardless of who you root for or who's won the Big 12, what amount of times over 10 to 15 years, I think we can agree that Texas and Oklahoma were the biggest brands in the Big 12, are two of the top of the top. Texas, obviously. They left and you were able to withstand it. You brought in Houston, you brought in BYU, you brought in Cincinnati, right? You've, you've, you've made some moves there, and now it seems everybody's happy. How long will that last? When they look at what they're not making compared to, I mean, you did add Arizona, you're adding Utah. I think the Big 12 will be the last bastion, that slash Notre Dame, before there are legitimately two super conferences, which will be the SEC and the Big Ten. But the weakest will die off. This is the jungle. Only the strong will survive. So I don't see anybody suing the Big Ten. I don't see anybody suing the SEC and winning. ACC, I think, I think you're on the clock. Pac-12's already dead. The Big 12's holding strong. But at what point is that? Does, do, do you start getting picked off a little bit? And a well, little at what bit point do we just split off football? Is that really what we're talking about here? Where we just split off football from all the other sports? I mean, like we just said, if we're just talking about basketball, who would want to leave the ACC? Who'd right? want to leave the Big 12? You know? So is that really what is going to happen? Is we're just going to split off football from all the other sports and just have two mega conferences? And then that begs the question that I've been asking for years now, which is how many teams can you possibly put in one mega super conference and still determine a legitimate winner in football? Yes, basketball can play 35 games in a year. Baseball can play as well. They can all play each other. They can all play each other twice if they really wanted to. True. You can't do that in football. You only have so many games you're able to play. If you pack a mega conference together, how are you going to determine a champion unless you go back to divisions, which that's just another conference. Well, that. isn't isn't two mega conference just one big thing with divisions? That's what I'm talking about. Like, at what point are we just arguing over semantics of, I mean, look at the NFL. You have only four, only four teams in a certain division, but then you have a conference and it's, I don't know. Well, the question we got, what sport or sports could live on their own separated like that? There's really two. It's college football and it's men's college basketball. And only some men's college and basketball. And only some men's college basketball. So and to me, I think that we already see some football teams, you know, at some institutions, the football teams in this conference, the basketball teams in the other one. Like, I mean, we've seen that before. So if we did have a separation of the power five or the the – the top, the top bunk of the Titanic, per se, of the Power Five, splitting off from everybody else, you could, you could survive that. College football could survive that on its own. College basketball, why would you want to leave the Big 12? And another thing, just in terms of it becoming a simple math problem, how many teams do you have to add to where, or how many teams can you add before you're actually not making any more money per year as a school in football, but you're making less. I mean, how many games can you possibly play in the matchups? For instance, I'd rather watch Clemson and Florida State, the two ACC teams we're talking about, play football against each other almost every year rather than watch Northwestern and Maryland play against each other. But those teams in the Big Ten are going to make far more money per year than Florida State and, and Clemson are in the ACC. You, you see what I'm saying? No, in terms I, of the I, quality I of matchups, like you, yeah. you can only play some Well, where's the games. line? Like, where's the line of teams that would be able to break off? Like, what happens to Wake Forest? Like, are they are they at that top, like Boston College? Some of these other, maybe these places that don't generate the revenue that even a lower-level SEC team does. That's why the relegation idea seems. Yeah, good. look, the more we, we talk about it. We keep coming back yeah. to that. You coming soccer. back to relegation? Because it could work in college sports. Well, I feel like the way we football. set it up, it could work. Which we need to go back over that this summer. Yeah. We'll go back over that. All right, a couple more in the Booster Club, then we're going to move on. All right, let's go to Chris. Chris, what is up? Do we just name the uh, conference the Southern and Northern Conferences? Go back to the old gray with the blue and gray game. I don't want to do Please. South versus North. <laughs> That'll make wanna, everything Last time worse. we did that, it didn't work out. That'll good. make everything worse. Yeah. Rise again. Yeah. We don't need that. Let's go to Jack Nas, 5524. What's up, man? Our legal system is so bad. Anyone can sue for anything without consequence. No contracts even matter. We need to change to where the loser pays. We just need, where's, where's Paul Revere when you need him? I know. He where is he? Out. Where's the harbor? Bunch of, dump a bunch of tea in. 
All right, let's go to Dex5890. What's up? He says, Scotty Pippen is still crying about signing a bad deal that he couldn't get out of. Clemson, Florida State need to do the same. I was just about to bring his name it's, up. I mean, it's like it's hard to argue your way out of that point. Mm-hmm. Like, you signed the paper. Like, like I, I, I guess the you're not, you're not honoring your end of the bargain so the deal is void. You can go, I mean, you can go that way. You can go that way. But I mean, pointing and saying, hey, we're not in 4K. I don't know if that's, do you have enough ammo to like convince somebody? That's what we're going to find out. All right, let's go to King Don. King Don, man, what is up? Let me go back to this. He says, oh, wow, Clemson crying about losing out on a couple millions. Uh, couldn't be me. It must be nice to have that type of problem. Well, it's, I don't think it's a couple million. It's like 30 million. I don't blame him for trying. Like, no, like, again, nobody's saying, <laughs> what do you say in Division Three? Nobody said it was a bad pass. Like, it's, I don't think you're wrong, but it's like, you can be right and you still sign the paper. Like, that's the problem. So that, that's what we're going to keep looking at. All right, let's get to uh, some of these rule changes here, Dave. All right, NFL, new changes. Let's start with the uh, swivel hip drop tackle. Can we play this video? This is the video the NFL played at a conference to demonstrate what the swivel hip drop tackle is that they are now going to ban unanimously. Let's play it. Uh, swivel. And um, <laughs> on a waiting... Uh, I mean, it's a game. tackle. You mean he tackled him? It's a tackle. You've heard us say... Do you know how hard it is to tackle somebody? Like in from the behind field, when they're running away from like, you? It doesn't like set up perfect always. So what can the offense not do? That's right? a 15-yard penalty now. Automatic first they, down. This is going to cost somebody a game, and they're going to change it. Watch. Here's, here's the problem. I, I'm glad that we try to make things safer. But we're trying to control things that you cannot control. Now, like targeting and launching – like that, I wish it was called by the off, for, you know, on the offense as well. It's amazing how that never happens. But I, I, I can see how you can control that somewhat. We can talk about where the quarterback gets hit. I think a lot of that is bull. But, but we're talking about tackling open field runners, which is already incredibly hard to do. Can you imagine going into the jungle and being like, no, Lions, you can't, you can't tackle the gazelle that way. Or the antelope that way. That that's that's basically what you're trying to control. Like it, it's telling somebody where you can tackle Tyree Kill. You're just trying to to get your hands on. Survive. Him. Like at what point are we just gonna just start kissing each other and you're down? Oh, he kissed him. Oh, that's by 2030. So he's down. By 2028. Oh, he kissed him. Just turn it into flag football. I mean, the horse already. collar. Let's tackle. just kiss each other. Blaine, the horse oh, collar. Tackle. Oh, 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 he kissed Tyree Kill. Please don't. The, the horse He's collar down. tackle was hard to argue against, right? I mean, you can clearly see when someone is horse collaring and you bring him from behind and there were torn ligaments, ACL injuries from that. This is, these are tackles. It's, for the, I would understand we could have this conversation about a quarterback. I feel like when it comes to quarterback, it's a little bit different. It's a little bit different the way you can tack them because it's mostly blindside. You never know. I like but, what you're saying. But yeah, as a quarterback, David, I think you can understand that. But like, guys, we are going to seven-on-seven football. Like, it's been happening for years. This isn't, this isn't the old days, you know, when Brian Dawkins is crawling out of the tunnel, speaking parcel tongue to a football. No, we have a bunch of guys in a locker room <laughs> dancing like ballerinas, ski, doing shit Shoot. like that. All right, this isn't the old days where people hardly play football. No, it's all about flash. It's all about throwing the ball. It's all about scoring points. That's why the Dolphins this, the Dolphins that. This is garbage. I don't know how you can play defense and attempt to tackle somebody. If you're a corner... You're, you're, I mean, I don't know how you can call this in the game. How are they, how is this going to be a judgmental call? See, I thought you it's might be gonna, in favor of this. No. The I mean, the up. more I looked at it, it's impossible. It's impossible to play defense. Well, it's, if, I, if I'm a DB, so you mean to tell me I can't touch you after the first five yards. If you catch the ball and I'm like in a trail position, what happens on a slant? And I get beat inside. When you better not get beat. You talk about playing inside leverage, buddy. I'll play eight yards, and they'll be they'll be throwing more outs against us. And it just you are trying to control things that you cannot control. And again, I understand trying to make the game safer. I get that. I'm not saying you're, you're wrong in thinking that, but this is just it's going too far. It's going too far. And they always why do all the rule changes 
tell the defense to like calm down. They really do. It's I. Like, it's amazing. It's it's it's, it's getting amazing. harder and harder to defend. Like, it is getting harder to defend. The best I'm trying. <laughs> the best I would get advice I would give a young coach. Coach offense. Coach offense. It's getting harder and harder to coach defense. How man. can I get mad? At my favorite team's defensive players when they miss a tackle after like, and you know, going to get fifteen yard penalties. And you know, this is going to come up. Oh no, it'll cost us all. We'll be live on streaming. The biggest moment. We'll be it'll live be, streaming. It'll be third down. It'll be third down and twelve. They'll get tackled for three yards. They'll, some woman referee will throw a fifteen yard penalty about getting <laughs> after a hip drop tackle. And then, then everybody's gonna be pissed. Oh, you thought that one was bad? That one did get unanimously voted in. Let's see which one. By the we're owners, about I think next. the the NFLPA said no. The, the yeah, it was by the owners, and some of the players were like, "Hey, we want a voice in this." A lot of players came out uh, against. Oh, we want a but, voice in the game but, that we're playing. But I still think like the NFLPA is behind it all. The NFL. Uh oh. It all. The ten ten foil hat. We putting it on. You don't need to look that Put far. Put it on, Dave. A conspiracy theory. Okay. Look at the new kickoff rules they're proposing, and you tell me if I'm a conspiracy theorist. Good. Play this little video from the NFL Operations Board. Like this is official new rule or proposed? No, this is what they're going to propose and vote on soon. All right, so you still kick off from the 35-yard line. Ten members of the kickoff team will line up at the receiving team's 40-yard line. A, member, a minimum of nine members on the receiving team will line up at the 30-yard line. Where do they do this? Play begins when the ball is either caught or hits the ground in the, in landing, the landing zone. zone. Any kick that hits the landing zone must be returned. Any kick that... I already hate this. I already hate this. Any kick that bounces from the landing zone in the end zone must be a touchback. If a kick fails or reaches the 20, the receiving team takes it at the 40. If the ball enters the end zone in the air, the receiving team can return it or down it and take possession at the 35 yard line. So that's the same. I might as well learn Chinese. The what the hell, hell is going on? I might as well learn Chinese. Uh, they yeah, speaking I'm, Mandarin? Well, can, can I say this? So uh, here's, the, here's the biggest point. No onside kicks. So there's no onside kicks when you adopt this new rule, except in the fourth quarter, and you have to announce that you're trying an onside kick. So no other point in the game. And you have to be trailing. That's what gives them the right You have to, to be losing. It has to be in the fourth quarter, and you have to tell the other team that you're going to try an onside kick. But there would be no fair catches, just so they no think kick, that just makes take up kick, for Just it. take kickoff out of the game. Well, then how do you get an onside kick? Like, how do you try and get the ball back? I don't know. Just take kickoff out of the game. Can't do it. Just Can't take it that. out of the game. No one returns kicks anyway. Not in the NFL. Like, Nobody, Nobody does. Just wake up one day. And Nobody like, does. You know College football needs to be completely different you know, just every single day, every single year. The NFL needs to be different. Let's take away kickoff. Let's change all the rules. Major League Baseball, you can't even hold your glove out anymore. Well, it's like, the, the it's like, it's it. like every four to five years, they try and they're like, how can we, maybe it's like a psyop. Like, is there any way that we could get people to stop watching football? Like, oh, let's make it really political. Let's, let's kneel during the national anthem and like everybody love it and tell everybody how racist everybody is. They're like, oh, well, yeah, that kind of works, but now everybody's kind of coming back to like, what if I, we just totally change the rules? Do you think they'll still watch it? I might. The only reason why people might stop watching college football is if you take tackling out of football. Well, this is NFL, not college. Yeah. I want to let everybody know that. Well, this one, they're hoping that the no fair catch in this with the landing zone would lead to more returns. Because right now they just had, what, the lowest return rate in the history of football in 20 why, You guys are also Why even put a kicker out there, put a return team, Put 10 guys, 11 guys, run down, and go tackle each other. Now, here's, here's a, a safe way. You're not 40 yards apart. You're 15, 20 yards. You go ahead and do that. All right, so here's, here's my safety. idea. Here's my idea. You can enter a raffle <laughs> each week in these major <laughs> cities. All right, $5. Oh, God. You put your name in there. Before each quote-unquote kickoff, all right, from each team, they pick a name out. All right, that person, oh, hey. John Wilson, row 36W, whatever, come on down. They put a blindfold on you. They give you a ball. They spin you around five times, and then you throw the ball down the field. Wherever it lands is where the team gets the ball. Man, great ideas happening. You know how much money? I like that. What about, what about, it certainly raffle. would get the fans involved. It's raffle, all right, but you get to return, and if you return in a certain amount, it's a certain amount of money you win. Like against the NFL against players? Against the NFL players. I'm going to need to look at... Come on, can you imagine some 300-pound dude named Rick 
I'm, I'm gonna need to look at Rick. I'm gonna need to look at Rick's bet online account to make yeah. sure the fix sitting in in this situation. You might be I like my, I like my idea. I like my <laughs> All right, idea. we got a couple other things to get to here. Let's talk about Caden Proctor for a second because we didn't yeah. get to this. This news broke the other day. So Caden Proctor, offensive lineman last season at Alabama, transferred to Iowa when the transfer portal opened. Now apparently he's going back to Alabama. He's going home. Yeah, and and I I don't believe he accepted the money from Iowa's NIL collective. It just my my, my point. Was, we can talk about whether you know this should be legal or, or you know whether it's ruining college football. I I don't think it's a good look. My only, my question is that if you're the team that they're returning to, and the easy like casual answer to me is well of course we would want this big time freshman player back on the team. Well number one I watched a bunch a lot of Alabama fans trash this guy the whole year saying that he's overrated and they were glad that he was going back to Iowa and there was a reason he was going back to Iowa. But if you're at a place like Alabama and the culture is what we know the culture has been, like you're one of the few places that has talented enough players where you can draw that line of, listen, you were here, you decided to leave, so you're gone. Mm -hmm. Like if this was, I mean, even a place like Auburn right now that needs all the help they can get up front, I would understand this guy coming back. Right, and welcoming him back with open arms. To me, I just, I find it very interesting from a, a culture standpoint that Alabama would be so open to have somebody leave and then come back. Do you think it's just because it's a new coaching staff and they're saying, hey, we didn't really coach this kid and we need all the help we can get to get off to a fresh do they need? Do they need all the I don't know, like, how, I don't know where they have him graded. Like, you know. I mean, he played a bunch of games last year. He struggled. Last year. But it's a new, he struggled. It's a new coaching staff. It would, I, I would. We're going to see, but we're going to see more of this. Like, this isn't, this is going to be something people are going to have to get used to. Guys are going to leave, all right? Might go somewhere and might come back. So he didn't take the money from Iowa. That's what I've, I've seen. But he could have, right? I mean, I, I guess eventually he could have, but uh, the way it was it was framed to me is that he didn't, I think it was like $100,000, something like that. I'm just, I, I think about this from, if I was a fan of that team, how would I feel? It, it's Again, it's easy to say, yeah, we want this freshman back that, that's got a lot of potential. You know, he's a lot of freshman struggles, especially up front. It, it, this is just weird seeing it happen at Bama. Because Bama's one of those Golden Hill places, right? Like the, the, it's a place where there's so much talent that's been accumulated that you feel like if you do abandon ship, they're not going to let you back on. This isn't, we're not talking about North Texas yeah. or like one of these smaller places that would welcome Caden Proctor, you know, with open arms. That's the part that I would just wonder a little bit. And I hope, mm -hmm. you know, for, for his sake that it does work out and he ends up being fine. I mean, I'm, I'm rooting for the people. Not necessarily the the place in these type of situations, but I don't know. It's just would Saban let him back? I don't. I don't. It's know. just then it, so. Bama always felt like it picked culture over talent if it came down to it, mm -hmm. right, especially with Saban. Well, it feels like the they had both. Like you don't have to pick. Like you had all the talent. Like what is Bama hurting for players? Like I mean, it's they've got some of the, they've got one, even without Saban there. They're still able to recruit at a really high level, at least so far. We'll see how it goes. But Alabama's accumulated so much wealth, it feels like they don't have to sacrifice I would say the, their offensive line was mediocre last year. But again, it's a whole new coaching staff. Like, if I'm I mean, Kalen DeBoer and I just came in and a kid transferred, like, even before I got there, really, this could be my first time meeting him. If I think he's the best football player, right, and I don't see some, like, noticeable, like, culture, culture I can, it's, problem. You, you, you just I'll got the there. That's player. the only, that's one of the few avenues where I can understand it. Again, it's just weird to see Alabama do it. Uh, let's talk about a couple more college football stories here. Trevor Etienne, who transferred from Florida to Georgia, running back uh, Travis Etienne's younger brother, got a DUI. Uh, I think he was arrested for, for multiple, mm -hmm. um, multiple issues there, not just drinking under the influence. Um, but it's what shocked me is he just got to campus, right? He's going to be the starting running back, I believe, at Georgia. And Georgia University has already had several issues with driving-related problems. It's just, it was a tough read for me when I saw this story come across. Yeah, well, I mean, it, if you're going to be a leader and uh, at a place like Georgia, and it, and it is kind of, you know, it, you know, you do have to call a spade a spade. I mean, Georgia's had more of these problems, it seems like, you know, stuff with, with obviously, cars and speeding, and, and, you know, you can go through the litany of problems. It seems like kind of the one Achilles heel is that, if you know, if you're going to transfer in somewhere, especially at a place like Georgia, 
you know, coming at a place that's been dysfunctional, let's be honest, in Florida, and you've seen what ETN said, you know, the reason he went to Georgia was, you know, because there's, they equip you better and this, that, and the other. It's, you know, you, I don't think Kirby Smart has a very long leash for this. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think he has to have a very long leash for this. And I don't know how you can submit, submit yourself as a leader at a place like Georgia when you're coming in screwing up off the bat before you've even taken a snap in a game. So you shouldn't drink and drive anyway. Like regardless if you're if you're in ETN, your last name, or if you're, like Blaine said, 300-pound Rick, you know, who's, who's Rick. trying to see if he can put his name in the raffle. I mean, it's just, it's a bad look, man. Yeah, it's sad uh, to All see. the way around. Um, all right, Jim Harbaugh said his former quarterback at Michigan, J.J. McCarthy, is the best quarterback in this upcoming draft That's and had surprising. the best pro day uh, out of all the quarterbacks. Look, you guys know where I stand. I hope he's right. I hope J.J. McCarthy is the best football player ever in NFL history. Do you guys see this that way for this draft coming up? I, I, then trade Justin Herbert, dog. And draft him at If he's six, that good, six, then why five. are you not going to get J.J. McCarthy? I just, we do this every year. Pro day, dude. We do this every year. There's not saying J. I On the pecking order, I don't think J.J. is at the top right now. Now, could he be? Does he have the potential to be? Yes, I just don't think he is. I, I'm just wondering, is, is this positioning? Because you're hearing it from a lot of different organizations. Like, are they trying to Will Levis the steal? Hey, man, let's talk really, really good about this one guy. See if somebody will take him early so we can get somebody else. Then all of a sudden, we're looking after round one, and he's sitting there crying in the green room. I mean, like that's not parents. what Jim Harbaugh's doing, right? But that could be what the Vikings— Is are, it? I mean, I don't think so. I mean, is, Jim Harbaugh is clearly just looking after one of his former players, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, could you not do both? Could you not be doing both? I mean, look, I wouldn't. You gonna draft him or what? I wouldn't put it past Jim Harbaugh. You'll draft him or what? No, I know they're not gonna draft him. They're gonna keep Justin Herbert. This is maybe it's free. Maybe it's just free for Jim Harbaugh to say this. Like, there's no repercussion for it. What are people gonna get pissed at him? You know, he's his former player. You can understand that, and he knows he's not gonna draft him or take him. So how does this hurt Jim Harbaugh? Or maybe he's trying. Like I said, he's trying to position somebody else. Hey, y'all need to go get JJ early. Yeah, man, maybe we'll trade you this pick. Maybe you can give us something. Let Brock you know, you Bowers, are, let Brock Bowers fall. They're at five. Yeah. We'll take Chargers Brock. at five? Yeah. Bro, oh, God. Don't let... Um, Brock at five? Uh, you probably need to go get some secondary, dog. Mm, yeah. Maybe. Need a lot. All right, two more things here. So, Deion Sanders said... What, what was exactly he said where he he's not going to go uh, recruit kids in their house? He said he doesn't need to go see their homes. They need to come see his home. So, he's not going to do like the coach goes for the in-home visit to the to the mom and dad. And look, if you're Deion Sanders, I, I think you can get away with a lot of stuff. Like, uh, the, you know, you can be like new school and, you know, hip. And say like Dr. Evil said, he's like, I'm hip. You know, I'm with it. You know, it, it's, but here's where it's, you're missing out. And like, you know, Kirby Smart isn't going to go this route. No other coach is going to go this route. They're going to go out in the trail and going into somebody's home there's something very, uh, when you're asking for their most prized possession, which is their child, to, hey, uh, we, you know, we want your son to come be our responsibility for four to five years. Now it can be 12 years, you know, if you're like Dylan Gabriel. <laughs> but when you go into somebody else's home, you know, typically there's food there, you're sitting down, you're getting to know kind of where they come from. And it's, it's not even an icebreaker, it's like a sign of respect. And then they come to your house, right? It's just like, you know, for, to, to use an example, it's like dating. Like it's, it's, you know, I'll go eat at your place and you come eat at mine. It's, it's kind of a, a respect thing. And I just, I feel like you're kind of spitting in the face of that. And can, can Dion get away with him recruiting? Probably more than, more than anybody else can. Uh, I'll, I'll admit that. But is it the most efficient way that he can turn Colorado into the monster that he wants it to be? No, I think you're hurting yourself. I don't think this is the best look. Kirby Smart will be in their house. Yeah, he will. Yeah. Maybe they're recruiting. That just always felt like a respect thing with me. Mm. Yeah. When you were recruiting? Yeah. Um, yeah, you go, you sit in their house, you talk to their parents, you know, you get eye to eye with them. Well, I mean, nowadays it might be a lot different. You might not even need to go. You can drop off an envelope and say, we'll see your son in a couple months. Um, that's what it's slowly turning into, which is sad. Hmm. All right, last one here for reactions. Uh, the squat record in Louisiana was broke. Oh, God. I need you guys to watch this. Look at this. And one. get uh-huh. fired up on a Tuesday. What's that dude from Pacific? Right? 845 pounds. 845. Is that nine uh, plates on each side? Well, yeah, when's he playing nose at LSU? 
I wonder how tall he is. Right he a little DJ Burns vibe to it. God, that's so many plates. God, it looks One, so heavy. two, three, four, oh. five, six, seven, like, eight. I feel like uh. watching this. Look at the bar. The bar's about to snap. As far as he's not going through the ground. Oh, that's pain. Good squat. Oh, oh, easy, easy money. Easy. Oh, he killed that. Put, put, 900. put 900 on there. Dude, put 1,000 on there. There's just something very, <laughs> like... That's who we're sending to defend the city. Primal about, like, watching a man... Like, you know, you remember in the weight room? Like, everybody getting fired up. Yeah. Watching that, watching the monster that you have lift all that weight. God, I tell you, you I wonder if Barrett Salee hate. could lift 845 pounds. 840 at least. I, I think, I think I Barrett... Barrett I, I wonder how much Barrett him. squats. If only we had... Oh, wait, there he is. Our buddy... From college football, smothered, covered, one of my favorite names of shows, and one of the best new shows out there. Barrett Sally, the Beretta, as we call him here. Barrett, you lived in 845 pounds or what? I mean, maybe combined throughout my life. I think the first and most important <laughs> combined thing. Combined throughout here, Jake, my life. Yeah, I, th I think the most the most important thing here, Jake, is that you insinuated that you've been in a weight room. Mm. Yes, and I actually I have. Mean, Mm, I actually have. The other door was closed. Yeah. He's been there to watch. Yeah. <laughs> I was 215, shoot, 215 pounds. Um, at one point, the most I got up to was 240. 240? Yep, you can ask wow. Wayne. You were 240 alone, right? pounds of steel yeah. and sex appeal. Yeah, hey, that's exactly right. Twisted want, steel and sex you appeal. You don't want that kick out trap block coming at you, man. No, look, especially for my old boy that, that here's the question though. How, how long before that guy again is like rushing the passer to LSU or just eating the double team? That's the guy oh, we're sending to defend him. the city, man. He, they just hey, he, he better not hip toss tackle because that's apparently illegal. So no, no, what do you, what do you think that. about that? What do you think about that that new rule? Honestly, I didn't even know what it was. Like when they, I didn't know it had a name. And then I saw <laughs> it, I'm like, what the hell does that mean? I mean, <laughs> I don't know. It's, Playing two hand touch lately? Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, it's, two -hand it's like I touch said. is basically what is coming. We're gonna just start kissing each other. We're just gonna kiss you and you're down. You're not helping with like the gay. No, I'm gonna keep choir. saying it. <laughs> no, I'm gonna keep saying it. Okay. I'm gonna I'm keep enforcing it because it's the truth. Day. Barrett, you know, we opened up the show talking about Clemson and FSU and how this has just turned into a, a romantic comedy. I mean, it's like I said, it's just missing Sandra Bullock and, and Ryan Reynolds. Where do you think this ends? Is it a settle? Is it a listen? You don't have to pay all of it, but you gotta pay some of it and it's worth it, you know, in the long run. Is that where we're headed? Uh, yes, it is. And I'm actually talking about this on my show today, too. I, I think the hmm. biggest thing that you have to look at, it's called synergy, my friend. Um, yes. It's it, when when is the right window to exit? You know, because the relationship between the ACC, Florida State and Clemson is done. Right. Yeah. They, they are they are a married couple who's staying married just for the kids, which is yeah. never a good idea. Right. Um, and I think when you when you try to uh, put it forward, like the ACC is not going to exist because Florida State and Clemson are not the only two that want this. I, I don't know if you guys remember. You remember that stupid name they came up with, the Magnificent Seven, was like <laughs> two, three years ago? Yeah, yeah. Like Florida State, Miami, Clemson, yes. North Carolina. Like those, <laughs> the Magnificent stupid, Seven. I mean, this is how dumb we are in college football. <laughs> like, we have alliances. We have legends and leaders as divisions. We have <laughs> the Magnificent Seven. seven. <laughs> yeah, like, I honestly still think that exists, right? And those, those schools are totally <laughs> cool with Florida State and Clemson being the front men for the band, right? Um, so I think the SEC is – the SEC doesn't care. I mean, you're going to have to convince 16 schools that – one of those teams or both are worth $75 million per year. Like they're not like yeah. just flat out not. So I think the best option is to go to the big 12. And when does the big 12 media rights deal end? 2030, 2031. That seems like it's far off for us. It really isn't in college athletic realignment talk. So I think to me, the most likely scenario is Brett Yormark, who I do believe is like Alex Anthopoulos. He's a GM ninja. I think mm -hmm. he will have this set up where Florida State and Clemson come to the Big 12, probably some other ACC members, and they're done with it. And I think moving wow. forward, is that comparable to the SEC and Big 10? No. In five years, is it worth 60, 65, 70 million dollars per year per, uh, per team? Yeah, probably. Yeah. I mean, Brett, Brett your marks made smart moves. I mean, I've, I've got to give the man credit. You know, kind of in the desert, he's been he's been roaming around finding watering cactuses and just finding a way uh, to push everybody through there. You know, Barrett, the, the one of the biggest questions 
moving forward is if they are able to wiggle out of this, and this is what we talked about at the beginning, I understand when you're dealing with entities like the SEC and the Big Ten, going at them is a lot different than it is going at, at someplace like you know Jim Phillips and the ACC. But if you can get out of this contract where it seems very specific in the reason that you signed it, like is there any contract that binds anybody to anything anymore? No, absolutely not. Mm. Uh, contracts are made to be broken, right? And I think, yeah. honestly, the ACC wants to save itself. But at some point, don't you sort of have to realize, hey, like this is not worth the headache. It's just not worth the headache. And if if the ACC is going to cease to exist, I think the the dominoes will will look more like the ACC just giving up, right? The if if multiple teams want to leave, what's the point of the conference even existing? And at that point, I think you're going to see that the real dominoes are going to be behind the scenes when employees start leaving because they want to yeah. get off the sinking ship. They want to get off the Titanic because that will signal the end of the ACC. Right now, Jim Phillips and other folks in that office still think it's a conference worth saving. If, if you start looking around saying, damn, nobody wants to be here, not even the mailman, not even the guy in the mailroom, then that's a problem. And ultimately, they'll settle and, and they'll disperse it however they want to do and move on. So at some point, David, wow. we're just going to have one of those going out of business sales, like the furniture yeah. places like, like that always has one office. every week. It's always going yeah. out of business and like half every, off. Every yeah. week, they're like, hey, we're slashing prices. We're going to close the store. I swear to God, at some point, it's going to close. <laughs> hey, Get new Blu-ray DVD good. half off, David, just for you. Get it while it's good. Barrett. It's a big long count. What are your thoughts on the first two rounds of the NCAA tournament and which uh, Sweet 16 matchups are you most excited about? Well, I think that to me... <sighs> The, it was real <laughs> chalky. We had some, you know, Cinderella's here and there. You have the NC State story, which is awesome. Um, but you don't have, you know, anything that really um, moves the needle in terms of, of Cinderella stories that can actually make the Final Four and, and win it. And, and that's okay. You know, to me, I think the, the beauty of the NCAA tournament is for the first weekend, everybody loves those stories. But by the time we get to the Sweet 16, nobody likes those stories. They, yeah. they want to see the best of the best compete. Mm -hmm. You need to have that Tom Brady. You need to have that New York Yankees, the Derek Jeter. And so you have those teams still in there. So that's what I'm most excited about. And honestly, the team is not necessarily a matchup. It's the team is, is Tennessee. Because they won with their like D minus game yeah. against Texas. Like they they survived the one they, they had played too. awful. And you know, you guys are in the SEC. You guys live in Tennessee. I'm right below Tennessee and Georgia. Like, that team is capable of much more. And I think toward the toward the end of the regular season, they had some clunkers like that, where you know Dalton Connect wasn't necessarily um, you know on his A game or B game, and they had other guys step up. And so we knew it existed, but that was the worst game that Tennessee played. And they did it in the NCAA tournament, and they did it in a way where they had control of the game through the outset, even if it was ugly. So that's the, it's not necessarily a matchup, it's a team. Like, how do you rebound from that? Mm -hmm. What happens moving forward? Can you, um, can you solve that one issue where, you know, if things snowball, you know, they get out of control uh, or almost out of control because you can't live like that? But Tennessee yeah. has, has shown that uh, in some cases they can make that work, at least for, you know, a 60 game, one, a 60 minute one off. Yeah, that whole Midwest region. I mean, you're talking about the Tennessee Creighton matchup right above it, Purdue, Gonzaga. Like, I'm excited for all of those matchups. You mentioned a couple baseball players' names in there, so I have to ask you, Shohei Otani, <laughs> if you were a betting man, is Shohei a betting man, or did his interpreter <laughs> steal his money, siphon it off like the guy for the Jacksonville Jaguars, and then bet it without his knowledge? No. There's absolutely zero <laughs> chance that happened. I mean, that is, it's a, it's a ridiculous story. Like, now look, I'm, I'm not a multimillionaire. I don't have nine figures attached to my name. I wish I did. But still, if three or four million of that just suddenly disappears from my bank account, I would think that if I don't notice, like my investment guy would notice, yeah. my marketing handle, like, there would be like somebody that says, hey, bro, like, what are you spending your money on? Because like from all accounts, like I don't know Shohei Otani, but to me, he seems like a responsible guy. Like he he would go through the motions of, of orchestrating and building his life in a way where he knows what's going on. He has control. I, I just don't buy that you would have a, a, a multi-million dollar scheme where the guy who owns the bank account doesn't know about it. That just seems unrealistic to me. But again, the, I don't have nine figures attached to my name, so I don't know. Is there not a greater way to cover it up, though? 
than not speaking the language in heaven and interpret. Oh, it makes people because then you like. Oh, it's like I Sammy just, Sosa going yeah. to Congress. Yeah, it's, it's like, like when I, Sammy Sosa went to Congress. I totally forgot how to speak English. This yeah, year. Like, sorry. <laughs> he said, "Wait, it's like I was trusting what he said. I mean, he was having to tell me what everybody else said. I don't know what you guys are saying. It's like we were talking with the guys from Outkick yesterday, and it's like Shohei gives like this long, like thirty second answer." In you know his his native tongue, and the interpreter's like, yes, no, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, that's just just that quick. Yes, he said yes. I love you. that kind of safeguard. Like if I say something stupid, somebody else stands. Well, in the way I just and like, need oh, an interpreter that. for every time I screw up. Like, oh hey, I forgot to do the dishes. Like my wife gets mad at me, and I'm like, hey, like Rick, I got to bring in Rick, my interpreter. Like you told me wrong. You said don't do the dishes. In fact, you were the one that was not not doing the dishes behind my back. Therefore, it's your fault. It's not your fault. No. Like, I, I just need an interpreter, Bear. It's just the truth. It's a great deal, man. It's a great gig if you can get it. And I'm glad we haven't heard anything about Yale and Auburn on the show today. Thank you, Baird. I appreciate that. Why? Are, I mean, why are you, why are you bringing, why are y'all bringing up all? I'm glad. Yeah. You yeah. About that's, that it's, 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 we're moving it's still on. still on my head, man. Yeah, I can't get on. it. I can't get it out of my head. Michael Knowles dunked it's on him. Bad. No, yeah. Michael Knowles. Yeah. David Kirstos. That's it's, what David did. And now he <laughs> will be punished. Fake news. Yeah. We're going to start off with Ugh. War Champ, Barrett. He wants to know, do you see any of the Southern teams joining the big from the ACC? The big that team. I can see if they, because look, the, the AAU thing, it does matter. Like the fact that the Big Ten views itself as some sort of intellectual superiority content. I didn't even say it correctly because I'm from the yeah. South. That yeah. is intellectually superior. Um, Y'all smart. At, from everybody else. <clears throat> What's that? Y'all smart. <laughs> yes, y'all. Like that matters. So, like, if they if they see Duke as a worthy, um, you know, uh, a worthy team because they're geniuses and dorks and play basketball very well, then like that Yale. might happen, right? Yeah, <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that could be a that could be a way to to sell it to those ads to say, okay, we're going to take a financial hit. You're going to have to, you know, live with not making, you know, seventy five. You have to make seventy, mm -hmm. but we're going to bring in Duke. We're going to bring in North Carolina or whatever because they're they're smart schools. They're they fit the mission of the Big Ten. I, I don't necessarily think that will happen, but it, it, do I think it's a possibility? Do I think it'll be a conversation? Yeah, I, I think it will be. I right, was going to Devin twenty one. She wants to know which one seed falls first in the bracket. Oh man, I'm going to say Purdue. Yes, mm. yes. I just you said I, right. I like Zach. I love Zach Eady, but I mean it's. It, if you get him in foul trouble, what does Purdue have? They can't come I don't back. I think they haven't. Yeah, I mean, I think it's the that's the one thing is you can't be so centered on one person. And and I think if you and there will be teams that literally try to get him in foul trouble as the only game plan, right? Yeah. Like that's the only way you can win. So you're going to go after him to do that. So I would say I would say Purdue is probably the one that, yeah. that jumps out to me. It's either that or find out who cooks his breakfast. Those are the two ways. And Gonzaga's good, man. Yeah. Well, Gonzaga's hot, right? I think Dude, Gonzaga, Gonzaga's so good. <laughs> yeah, well. They're so good right now. Well, it's funny. When Gonzaga's not the darling of the tournament and everybody won't shut up about him for one year, they're actually making a run. It's, it's funny yeah, like, kind of how, and again, Mark Few's done a good job in the NCAA tournament. Nobody's doubting that. But every year it's, oh, Gonzaga, they're as good as, as anybody in the tournament. They can win it. It's amazing. You didn't hear about us. You heard McNeese was going to beat their ass. That's what you heard all week. And I kept saying, they're going to hear this and they're going to hear this. And they, that was belt to butt. Yeah, belt if to I've butt. ever said, belt to well, butt, beat to beat. with Gonzaga is they never really right. outperform, but they never really underperform. Yeah. Right? They're sort of they're all if they're gonna if they're gonna make it to the Sweet Sixteen, okay, they they lose in the second round or they make the Elite Eight. Like it's mm -hmm. always like you know the prediction is there, but they're always just sort of. I swear though, they would have won it. They would have won the COVID year. I, I firmly believe that. I don't think I don't think that's that's crazy to say. I I think when they didn't win it, when they made it all the way to the national championship game with Timmy and Suggs and that group, they and they ran Baylor, into right? just the absolute monsters that Baylor had, <laughs> uh, especially in the front court. I thought that was their best chance to win it because um, they've always, again, gotten... The one I can't figure out is why St. Mary's can't win in the NCAA tournament. They just can't it's win. It's remarkable. It's like it's absolutely insane. They just drew Barrymore 50 first dates. When they get in, they just totally forget, and they play a Virginia style. But, Barrett, what do you got coming up on the show today, man? I'm loving what you're putting out there, and, and I know uh, other people are as well. Yeah, we're going to talk about Florida State and Clemson as well. Also talk to uh, Jake Rowe from Dogs HQ. And, uh, you know, still writing for Outkick. You can read our oh, stuff oh, there. Oh. And uh, I, teaser alert, boys. Oh. Teaser alert. Teaser. It is 8.24 a.m. on Tuesday morning. 
by 8 24 a.m on wednesday morning i'll have a lot to share about uh future endeavors Ooh, i love wow. to see it let us wow. let and us know necess- and they're not necessarily exclusive to college football either I love that. Wow. Are you, okay. listen, are you, are you becoming a gymnast now? Is this what you're going to, your dream yes. to live out? I can't you're wait. You're finally going to yes. become the ice skater you always wanted that's to be. That's exactly right. I like thought I'd change. Michael Michaels. Yeah. That's the exactly right. The Lotus. Barrett. I just thought Joe I'd Joe Hayes' new interpreter. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it is. There it is. That's, that's what it is. is. Joe Hayes' new interpreter. Just put a million on high point. All right, Barrett. Appreciate it, buddy. Thanks <laughs> so much. Put a million on high point. See y'all. All right, Barrett Sully, one of the best in the business. Going to uh, get to the phones here in a second. Going to get to the Booster Club as well. But first, guys, you know what the real March Madness is? Hold on before you answer that. It's a struggle to find quality, affordable American meat at the True. grocery store these days. That's big you fun. can't. <clears throat> Breathe. I can't even say it. Breathe. I'm not upset about it. God. I'm angry. You've angered me. But that's why we... <laughs> Spit it out, Junior. <laughs> You have angered. Tell me this doesn't fit. That's why we choose the convenience of having all of our meat delivered from Good Rancher. <laughs> yep, right to the door. <clears throat> Better than your ranchers. As the number one American meat delivery service in the U.S., Good Ranchers brings 100% American beef, chicken, pork, what else? and wild-caught seafood woo, woo, right to your woo, door. Woo, woo, woo. I'm going to get this out. I'm going to get this out. Hold on. Then take a sip, dog. There it is. Oh, it's still hot. It always amazes me. All right, seafood right to your door. Relieving you from the grocery store chaos and the park and nightmares, right? Especially if you live somewhere where it snows. Let's be honest. When you go to the store, you got to park a mile away. You get the cart. You go through this whole process. Not with Good Ranchers. Stop the meat madness, all right? Enjoy the March madness, but stop the meat madness, okay? Go to GoodRanchers.com where you can be confident in the quality and affordability of every cut. And they never let you down in the first round or the first two rounds like my team does. Seems like every year. So claim your $150 value of free wings as well. Ooh. Plus an additional $20 off when you use code Booster. That's B-O-O-S-T-E-R at GoodRanchers.com today. That's GoodRanchers.com with promo code Booster, B-O-O-S-T-E-R, to enjoy the March meatness savings. Good Ranchers, American meat delivered. I had March it last night, boys. Meat. Yeah, you did. Bone and ribeye. Yeah. Cooked to perfection. You'd love to see it. Really? What are you cooking on? My wife cooked it. <laughs> yeah. I love your, first so off, top. I love your honesty. And second so off, so I bet it was good. Finish but, it in the oven? Finish it in the oven? Sear? Yes. There you go. Of course we did. Nothing wrong with it. Of course that. we did. Um, Sear and sizzle. But the grill the grill is making its way back out. Weather's getting warmer. It, it is. Back ribs. All yes. right. So, David. Dave. David. Phone calls? Pongo. Pongo? Pongo. Kirk's on the line. All right, oh, good. to him yesterday. Good. Good. Kirk, what do you have to say Kirk? today that you wanted to say yesterday but that you couldn't say yesterday? You say it today. Well... Before we get to the hockey update, I uh, I have been following March Madness for quite a few years. Love it. The guy yeah. that introduced me was a huge, huge Duke fan. So is his last name uh, Shashevsky? My favorite, my, my uh, favorite team is whatever team beats out Duke usually every year for some reason. I just yes. love to see Duke lose. Well, okay. kind of like the Flyers in hockey. I well, think, I think you're look, like look, they're look. taking on Houston this week. What is the Flyers update? What is where are we at on that? I'm staring at it right now. Uh, Eight points, I think. It was, uh, I don't think they played last night. So I think Toronto's no. up by eight. Yeah, Flyers play today. Flyers play today. So you got it. You got the Flyers. 12 and a half. Just 12 and a half plus 12 and a half oh, points. Yeah. How much time we got left? Kirk, we're how many coming, games have we got left? We're coming down to it. The, the Leafs only have like 14 games left to play. And uh, I think the Flyers have 12, maybe. Something what was like the bet? You so got to send yeah. us like one of Trudeau's hairs? Kirk has sent me $100,000. <laughs> That's right. He's got to send you 100000 Canadian dollars. Money. That was the bet. Yes, whatever currency oh, y'all man. use. Tears of happy people. Hey. Anyway, let's, uh, let's get to the hockey update so you can get to your next caller there. We've got, uh, we've got quite a little race going on for the Hart Trophy. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Hart Trophy is the MVP. Yep. Hart, uh, just uh, for your hockey guys, uh, your listeners and aren't too, too familiar with Hockey Hart is H A R T. It was named after Cecil Hart, who coached literally about a hundred years ago. And uh, so it's the MVP. We've got we've got a race. Four guys. One is uh, of course Austin Matthews trying to get to seventy goals, which yep. doesn't happen very the often. Witch. Mm-hmm. One is one is Nikita Kucherov for Tampa Bay. He's Another leading the league name. in points. He's uh, he's pretty awesome. He's 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 a fifty uh, percent of all of Tampa's goals. Or he wow. has something to do with him which is pretty phenomenal. 
Uh, I just learned last night that Nathan McKinnon is going after something that's hardly ever happened. He's trying to get a, a point in every single home game of the entire season. Really? That's only happened one time by that's a guy crazy. by the name of Wayne Gretzky. Yeah, he's pretty good. But <laughs> but I think if Connor McDavid reaches the plateau of 100 assists to become only the fourth player in NHL history to do that, I think Connor McDavid might uh, might take home the Hart Trophy. We'll see, wow. man. It's going to come down the wire. Year? Did he win it last year? Yeah, uh, Connor McDavid won it I last won it. year. I, I won it last won year. It oh, Jake won it last year. At least twice. <laughs> he, uh, guys, only three guys have done it. Bobby Orr's done it once. Mario Lemieux's done it once. And Wayne Gretzky did it 11 times. God. Yeah. Crazy. What's well, that? 100, 100 assists. Oh, 100 assists. Yeah, gotcha. 100 assists. Gotcha. 11. Well, yeah. uh, Goodness gracious. That's a lot, Kirky. Yeah. Appreciate the update, bud. He was, Kurt. Yeah. So on the, my final note is go Tar Heels. I got the Tar Heels yep. going all, all the way. All right. right. Okay. Yeah, I can believe in that. We'll be Good out there. Pick. Love to hear it, Kirk. Awesome, Thanks bro. for calling in, take brother. Take care of business. All right. Let's go to Jake in Florida. Jake. Do you see Jake at the Jake convention? Yeah. <laughs> hey, guys. Um, so I want to talk about Jake's Twitter video that I saw this weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, it seems like, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like as an Auburn fan, you guys are having uh, an identity crisis amongst each other because, you know, what are your goals as a program? Who do you want to be? Mm-hmm. You know, you have half the fan base is split on, hey, we just want to be a good uh, family, a good environment. Like, that's what we want to be known for. And then the other half, wants to see the fruit from that, the accomplishments, the benefits, because um, I I know that there's a thing with Alabama fans. People always pick at us because, you know, if we, if we win nine games, we're going to fire our head coach. That's because we know who we want to be. Yeah. And we want to win championships. So I think, you know, is one final four appearance in five years going to be good enough? where you have no hardware to show for it. I mean, that's the way that I took your, yeah. your Twitter video. Well, I yeah. You it, got a lot of pushback for that. Well, I, again, I, I think you have, you have people that are just happy with, with getting there, right? You just have people that, that want to say, well, at least we're not terrible. I think that when you lower the standard like that, and, and again, you know, you got to be able to walk and chew gum at the same time. Basically, what I said was, Auburn is very lucky to have the coaches that they have. Nobody's saying anybody should get fired or anything like that. But it seems that, and I'm talking about postseason, and tell me where I'm wrong. Outside of 2019, when Auburn made it a run in the Final Four, and this is just using basketball as an example, right? We haven't been passed around to 32 since. Okay, that's, it's 2024. We're now done with, with March Madness in 2024. All right, so that's now five years, or the last four years, of not being able to make the second weekend. Right, I know that Bruce Pearl and them, that's not good enough for them. And they know that. But then you look at football. Football hasn't won anything. I mean, God, since, since when? Since what, 2017? You played an SEC championship game and lost? You know, and, and that's not all Hugh Freeze's fault. You know, it's one of the reasons Gus Malzahn ended up having to move on is because they weren't winning anything in the postseason. We were just getting right. to the door instead of walking in. College baseball. All, Butch Thompson has done incredible for Auburn baseball's program. You know, they've had great regular seasons. They'll host a super regional or maybe even make an Omaha. But when they get there, when, when have they ever advanced? Like at some point, I don't think saying, hey, we need to stop blowing it in the clutchest moments. I don't think that's a crazy thing to say. Like, or, or why can we not have both? Nobody's saying you're going to win every big game you play. Nobody does that, right? That's what That's what's made some of these You know, Georgia winning two out of the last three national championships. Nick Saban going on his run that he went on. That's what makes it so impressive. But you have part of, and look, every fan base has this. I don't think it's just, you know, cornered to Auburn. But you have some people that are like, no, we should just be happy with having really good regular seasons. And that should be good enough. And what happens in the postseason, that's okay. You know, whatever. I don't think that should be the way we go about it. I think you have to... Not lower the standard, but you have to be realistic. I feel like if if not, then then what what are we even doing this for? Like what? Yeah, I want to have a great atmosphere, but also want to beat Yale. 
Like, I want to go past the round of 32. I want to go to Omaha and win some games. I want to actually play for an SEC championship and then not blow it. Or maybe when it's fourth and goal from the 31, not give up a Hail Mary touchdown. Or when you're leading in the fourth quarter against Georgia, you win the game. Or when you beat New Mexico State. Like, is that asking too much? Auburn fans have, have again, It's if you're split on this, then it's just a difference of what you think is important. And I think winning in the big stage is important to keep yourself relevant. I don't think that's a crazy thing to say. Right, yeah. It's definitely it's an identity standpoint. You know, who do you want to be? That's the way I see it. But um, really quick, you guys touched on the Caden Proctor situation a couple minutes prior. And I just want to I just want to fill you guys in. So from my understanding, Caden left because he was homesick, but also he was very disgruntled with the staff because he came in as a freshman uh, at 330, and they beat him up to 360. So he had to adjust to SEC speed, to Division One speed at left tackle, playing 30 pounds heavier than he has ever played before, and he was very unhappy uh, at the way that they handled that situation. So whenever he left and the new staff got hired, they liked their guys a lot leaner. They're not going to put as much weight on their guys. And so – He's already dropped 20 pounds, and I expect when he gets back to campus, if allegedly that's where he's going, that they'll, uh, they'll make him drop even more weight, and I think that that was kind of a selling point for him. To return. Well, if that's the case, then why would you leave in the first? Why wouldn't you just go to the new coaching staff and say, hey, I want to play at 330 or 320, and they go, you know what? We like our guys at 320. Why don't you stay and we'll do that instead of leaving? Like, why, why would you go through because the whole— I think because I think he had already been in touch with Iowa staff, which he admitted to, and was yeah. already dead set on returning home. Because, you know, that well, just, then you left, dog. Like you, like you, you left. What you reports left are you hearing that the coaching Nick Saban staff wanted him to play offensive line at three hundred and sixty pounds? What is it? What 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 reports that, did you hear that they wanted him to play at three hundred and sixty pounds? Think about what Iowa does. Iowa runs the football more than Nick Saban's former program. Like, I I played with guys who came in at 330, and they were mandated to lose weight and get down to 310. I've never heard a coaching staff say, we want you to get up to 360 pounds. Because, well, the coaching staff wanted everybody to be 350-plus. That's why uh, Latham weighed in at 365, but then on his pro day, he was 340. He had to lose 25 pounds to move the way he did at his pro day. Well, well that, that was a... Well, Jake, let me ask you this. What is, was Nick Saban wrong? I personally, I disagree with that because I think that you you will get more out of your offensive linemen because I, I'm pretty sure the NFL, the standard weight on the offensive line is like three, uh, I think it's like 315, right? 320, it's something. I'd, I'd, I'd have right. to look at it. Here's well, what I would say, though. I think yeah. Nick Saban's track record of putting offensive linemen in the NFL is pretty good. I'm just... I feel like it's a little bit more than that. Like, like I feel like I would believe well, the homesick part. Right. I would believe yeah. the homesick part a lot more than the weight part because, I mean, God just got – I mean, look at, the, look at the guys that Nick Saban just put in the league. I'm, I'm not saying that he didn't want them big. I mean, look at Georgia's offensive line. It's basically, you know, a bunch of transformers up there. I just – my whole point is that regardless of, of that action, you – admitted to tampering with the Iowa coaching staff, you decide to leave Alabama, yep. even though when you knew the new yep. staff that's coming in place, you go back to Iowa, then you go back to Alabama. I just, it's just yep. not saying, I think the rule, there should be guardrails on the rules, right? We've talked about this a million times. I'm just surprised to see it happen at Bama. Yeah. Appreciate totally it, Jake. I agree. And we discussed, yeah. it, we discussed it earlier. Um, the only thing that's going to get it to change because Nick Saban was talking about it, was if something happened like this, as an example, which yeah. the timing was perfect. For sure. Mm-hmm. I agree. Thanks for the info, man. We appreciate it. All right, let's go to Angelo in Pennsylvania. Angelo, talk to us. Morning, fellas. How are you? What's, What's up, up? I uh, just wanted to give like a yearly wrestling update. I appreciate Cone giving a shout out to Penn State's two four-time national champs over the weekend, Carter Oh, yeah. Unbelievably impressive. Yeah, so a couple other stats to show off a little bit for Penn State. Uh, they have won, now won 11 of the last 13 national titles, true mm, dynasty. Wow. They won by 100 points. 
So the next closest team was 100 team points behind them. And if you took Penn State's total points and split them in half, they would have finished one and two. Wow. So, <laughs> true dynasty, uh, crazy. Yeah. Maybe Dom- they need to break away. Dominant. You want to talk about guys that are built different? Wrestlers are built different. Yeah, they, like I used to like. I think they're just insane. If you get, yeah, I mean, obviously, but yeah, I think it's their conditioning insane. is the craziest shit you'll ever watch in your life. Hands down, the craziest thing you'll ever watch in your life. Yeah, um, and that's going to lead into a little bit of my next question, which was: um, there's this really cool event they do uh, this weekend. It's coming up. So Pennsylvania is widely recognized as the best high school wrestling state. So they have an event where the best senior at each weight class from Pennsylvania wrestles the best senior from the entire country at each weight. Oh, wow. And Pennsylvania's won about 33% of the time. So it's pretty impressive. For that is cool. Team. So my question, yeah. So my question is, do you think there is any other sport where any one state of seniors would be able to compete against the entire country, let alone win at that high of a rate? Hmm. Man, I I feel like you'd have to lean toward the bigger states, right? Like Texas, just because the amount of people, you would think you'd find somebody that would have a better chance of competing at, at the highest level because there's so many. I would say, I'll give you one. <clears throat> I would say Georgia <clears throat> in baseball. I would say the state of Georgia in high school baseball. You could put the top-ranked high school Georgia team in each classification to play outside of the state of Georgia, the top-ranked team in that same classification. I wonder if there's something like super specialized, like bowling or billiards, some sport like that. Disc like golf. Super, starts. like or, or pickleball. Yeah, something newer like that, where it's just like, uh, like accumulated to a very a small city or town in a state. That's, that's a good, a good question. question. We'll have to look into that. Maybe some yeah, snow sport. Maybe a snow like sport. sport. Yeah, <laughs> snow sport. That would be a good one. X yeah. game style. Yeah. yeah, like man up in Maine, they're skiing their ass off. Like man, we're killing everybody in snowboarding from yeah. Georgia. <laughs> like dude, in ice fishing, Alaska's just running hop house right <laughs> Been now. Been one seed for 13 years. Yeah, bear fighting, Montana. Appreciate it, Angelo. Appreciate Thanks, it, Angelo. Man. Thanks, yeah. man. See ya. All right, let's go to Colton in Chattanooga. Colton, what's up? Hey, so actually, first of all, it's Colson with an S. But Colson, yeah. Hey, David. Uh, we'll, we'll you come it. in my house, you get my it's wife. It's Christine. Name. I read what they put on the thing. It's Christine. Christine. That is a yeah, 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 C-O-L-T-O-N. Yeah. It's Christine. This one has the vodka in it, honey. The worse my eyesight gets, you'll be cotton next time. because Hey, don't like be fooled. <laughs> Well, I wanted to call because as the resident lawyer in the chat, this is Glegby, by the way, oh. as the resident lawyer in the chat, I have got to correct a record on some things. What, you oh, said, oh, hey, you said lawyer? You said lawyer? Yes. Thanks for calling. Thanks good. for calling. Next no, I'm how much ahead. is this calling? Yeah, I'm looking go for ahead. a good how much one. Is it Keep speaking, right Glegby. I want to hear it. <laughs> Sorry, this one's... <laughs> this, one's, this one's pro bono? <laughs> they already cut oh, him yeah. off the line. Oh, yeah. There he is. <laughs> So, first of all, I did see someone in the chat who said that they should make the losers pay in lawsuits. That person may not be aware that losers pay frequently, uh, especially in contract lawsuits. Any okay. contract, especially in this ACC situation, any contract drafted by a lawyer worth his salt is going to have an attorney fee provision where the prevailing party gets awarded his attorney fees. So, mm. Guaranteed in this situation, I, w- I would be almost willing to 100% guarantee it, but we lawyers never 100% guarantee anything, that there's an attorney fee, f- fee provision and that the winner of this lawsuit is going to get his attorney fees. So that settles that. But okay. I want to talk about the ACC lawsuit as it stands because, David, I think you've been wrong about some things. Although I do really appreciate your suckers reference, uh, my bachelor's degree is in film, so I. Appreciate You've seen it. suckers? Obscure. I was yeah, just hoping man, that there I was just one person who had reference. seen suckers listening, and he called in. I can't yeah. believe it. Oh yes. What a great yep, B, B movie. But where where am I wrong on the on the uh, on the lawsuit though? Because I would love to learn. Well, so I don't think this is a situation where they can just point to the contract and say, "Hey, isn't that your name?" All right, see you later, because. What uh, and now I'm looking at the to clarify I'm looking at the Florida State lawsuit I'm not really looking at the Clemson lawsuit I okay I was looking lawsuit. at Clemson but go ahead and and fair enough fair enough so the Florida State lawsuit at least their arguments boil down to and it's obviously more complicated than this but that just to kind of boil it down to more simple terms 
two basic points. The first basic point is the non-compete provision, which is essentially what they're labeling that exit penalty, is violative of Florida law and is therefore unenforceable. So Mm. I'm not a Florida attorney. I'm licensed in Tennessee, Georgia, and Alabama, but I'm not licensed in Florida. So I don't know how non-compete law works in Florida, but judging from what I've read in the complaint, it appears that Florida just doesn't allow non-compete agreements at all. Again, I could be wrong about that. That's what it appears based on the complaint. And so they're saying that this exit penalty is in some sense a non-compete provision because it's a restricted trade, and so it's unenforceable. That seems legit to me, although, again, I haven't read the contract, so I can't tell you with... Well, is that, Glegby, is that why why the ACC is doing their trial in North Carolina as opposed to Florida? Maybe, although that's probably more just a... No, they're headquartered North there. You mean yeah, I know they're headquartered there, but is that like no, a, a they're sweetener. headquartered there. Clemson filed theirs in South Carolina. But my question okay. is, if that's the case and that's Florida law, then how was the contract signed in the first place? Or if it benefited Florida State for another school not to be able to leave, then they wouldn't be bringing up state law. Or for that matter, could the state law could could a state just change their law if they want to be able to get out of this contract? I mean, could North Carolina and Duke who say we don't want to be in this anymore, they could change state law so that they can then not have a a, a non compete violation with the ACC. Well, first of all, if you change the state law, that's not going to work retrospectively, and so that's not going to affect mm. this contract. Gotcha. But so so you say comes, until you get in front of a judge who says, you know what, we're allowing anything these days. <laughs> well, I, I promise you no judge is going to enforce a retroactive uh, I, I law. I hope so. We're uh, grandfathering yeah. in. <laughs> yeah. Now, when it comes to um, – when it comes to – what you were saying earlier, um, venue, like, so they're suing in North Carolina. There's basically three lawsuits going on in three different areas. That may be based on just the contractual provisions. So oftentimes you'll have a venue clause in the contract that mm-hmm, will determine okay. the jurisdiction and venue. So I don't, I don't yeah. think there's going to be too much there. Big point that they make here is actually pretty interesting because they're alleging that the contract itself was actually brief. Um, yeah, and they actually, uh, Florida State does. I don't know about Clemson, but Florida State actually kind of outlines the different breaches, and there are some interesting ones here. So they basically accuse Florida State of completely mismanaging their finances to the extent that it breaches the agreement. Uh, but they also here's this one that I find interesting. It's that they accuse the ACC of committing to a tier one agreement for unheard of period of 20 years at rates negotiated before year one, while failing to secure a reciprocal commitment from ESPN for the last nine years. So basically what they're saying is you breached your, you had a duty to handle this appropriately with us. And you breached that duty by signing terrible deals with ESPN. Okay. And then they say, that they undertook an ill-conceived expansion of the ACC to include Sanford, Cal, and SMU for the purpose of maintaining the minimum number of required ESPN, required members for the ESPN agreement, the absolute dilution in per member value. Mm -hmm. So they're saying our value of this deal has gone down because you included all these new guys in there. You did these new, without our say-so, we had no right. And so you just, unilaterally decided to decrease mm-hmm. the value of that's a much more interesting yeah approach. so you could meet the the amount of minimum required because now the member ACC schools contract. have changed yeah. once you allow now they did get a right. vote when you say they had no i mean they did get a <coughs> vote, but they could have voted against that right i, I yeah. can't remember i think it was there were four four schools who voted against that probably with the oh, okay, the forethought it. of saying hey let's make sure we vote against this so when the alignment of the conference changes we can use that in the lawsuit that's much more interesting yeah. to me than what clemson is yeah. saying here which is just like we don't don't, you know, we don't like the restriction that the grant of rights changes, which is why it was put in place yeah. in the beginning. And as far as the state law in Florida, I mean, heck, now I'm thinking, well, what's to keep the University of Florida for honoring their commitment to the SEC? If there's a non-compete, they could get that $75 million a year with the SEC and go get some extra on the side. Here's, you know here's, what I mean? here's what's Love keeping it. them. The SEC goes, do you want to the leave? They look at them and go, hell no, please no. Yeah. <laughs> Glenn, uh, can I ask you something real quick? 
Yeah, go for it. Uh, just give me your honest opinion here. Would I have a case if you know somebody <laughs> who put a hex or a curse on your basketball team? How do you think that'd go over in court? Be very careful right here, Glegby. <laughs> you think I have a case here? I, well, I won't give you any particular legal advice, but I mm-hmm. will say that I don't know of any causes of action for putting a hex on a basketball <laughs> team. Yeah. Well, we need to put one in there. I'm going to look at provisions. Colson's yeah, like, look, go watch Jonah not, but look, Hex. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'm more than happy to charge you my attorney's fee. Yeah. Point, so. Well, we'll just have that. I'm about to take all Hey, Glegby, I really appreciate that information, man. It's a complicated <laughs> subject, and it has major implications. We're talking yeah. about one of the premier conferences in college athletics possibly collapsing. We just saw one that lasted for over 100 years in the Pac-12 yeah. collapse after a, uh, one year, really. Yeah. Something Definitely. like some good law talk before. Right. Florida State did mention that Pac-12 thing in their lawsuit as well. So I find Smart. That interesting. Smart. Glad we appreciate it, Great buddy. Great call, man. Yeah, man. Thanks, man. All right. Uh, should we get one more? Oh, let's yeah, go to time. Jared in Seattle. We got Jared. Yeah, Jared, Jared, Seattle. 30 March seconds. March Madness, off. baby. You did it. What's up, man? <clears throat> hey, y'all know I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, was, You're happy. I was wondering when we were getting this call. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to... Uh, <laughs> wanted to see uh how we're feeling about this uh gonzaga purdue matchup i know you guys have been <sighs> dude i'm, I'm the, gonzaga. i think it's the best on the board man. Uh, well i i think creighton tennessee is the best game but i i think gonzaga if there's a one seed that's going down this weekend i think purdue's sweet going down muffin. like a sweet muffin see that's interesting i um i'm actually taking purdue so uh oh wow wow I just yeah i hope your wife's not listening yeah. to this call See, you got to remember, it's like 5.50 a.m. in Seattle, so she's still asleep. I'm whispering real Well, quiet. maybe I should. <laughs> he thinks he's loud. asleep. Yeah, you Yeah, think it's so. all of a sudden yeah. you she heard around. exactly Why what is there a knife said. pointed at you? <laughs> well, it's just like the last time I called, I think I called from the Maui Invitational, and I had just yeah. finished watching Gonzaga versus Purdue. So I think I've seen this matchup before, and it's, uh, it's pretty interesting because – I don't really know if Gonzaga has the bigs to keep up with Edie, but if they can stay out of foul trouble and knock down threes, then I guess they have a chance. Well, but yeah, well, to I me, it's not even just different. about like trying to go go blow for blow with Zach Edie. That's going to be tough. You just got to try and get close to a stalemate and then let somebody else beat you. I think Gonzaga's got better guards than Purdue does. I, I think they do. Jared, how was it seeing Zach Edie in person? Because I mean, look, he's seven foot four, so he's been like. He'd just been big for a while. And two seasons ago, we saw when he was with Ivy, and he was really splitting time 50-50 with Traverion Williams. Yeah. What, what was that his name? Yeah, Williams. Um, but now he seems like he's, he's, he's such an improved basketball player on top of being 7'4". The way he's running the court, the way he's passing out of double teams, what was your impress, uh, impression in person? Man, so, all right, it's pretty crazy. So I played college ball like, at one of like the smaller conferences that you really get like one or two kind of bids in the um, – Mm-hmm. in the tournament so I still have a little bit of ego with me and so I actually saw Zach on the elevator because everyone stays in the same hotel I saw him on the elevator like and I was thinking like this dude is the biggest man I've ever seen in the world like, I've <laughs> like is it just life, just weirdly how, huge how big was the elevator yeah like was <laughs> so he had to duck like I'm six five I'm six five and I had to like I was like a child next to him. So I'm really thinking like, yeah, he's too big. I could probably still give he's him He's almost buckets. a foot taller than you. And, and you're six and I, I can still give him buckets, though. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> look. Had, you got to go right uh, in his neck. Play. I saw him playing, and he's like moving his feet. He's running the floor this year. Yeah. He's, um, you know, yeah. he's so gifted with his footwork at that size. He's incredible. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, that, that's what, that's what like separates the him. Court that, that's what separates sure. him. I mean, his feet and hands have to be massive. But like in one more thing before I let you guys go, yeah. he, um, it's super interesting too because playing Purdue, it's like you're not only trying to trying to keep up with them on the scoreboard, but I think how they really get you is like in the seven eight minute mark of the first half, you look up and everyone's in foul trouble when they're already in the bonus. Yeah, because he just absorbs fouls. Well, that's he what they said. He's so he's tough. responsible for nine and a half fouls drawn a game, so wow. he's basically putting them in the double bonus without in getting half. in foul trouble himself. Without getting in he foul stays trouble out himself. of foul trouble so well. Yeah, uh, Jared, great stuff, right. buddy. Hey, Jared, call in again next week, man. Uh, word is we might be at North Carolina, Alabama this week in L.A. Watching yeah, the game. we uh. God. The the rumors are just we, flying we across the board right now. I do want to let you All right, let hey, you. Lawrence, call in tomorrow, man. Yeah. Lawrence and anyone Long else go. on the line, y'all call in tomorrow. You get to go first. Yeah, Lawrence, you go first, but first, 
All right, I'm going to give a shout-out to K9 Salute. Yeah, All right, what on. is K9 Salute? Blaine asks, ominously waiting for an answer. Well, Blaine, it's a veteran-founded company that's dedicated to providing healthy dog treats to honor and remember our nation's canine heroes who serve in all capacities of the military. I love animals. I know you guys love animals. Uh, canine Salute creates wholesome, high-quality protein treats with no harmful fillers or ingredients, all sourced right here in the United States. And by choosing Canine Salute, this is the most important part, you're not just treating your dog to a healthy snack. A portion of all treat proceeds go towards providing protective vests for police canines nationwide, which is a fantastic situation. Uh, our amazing dogs love us every day. They help serve our communities. Let's love and honor them with a healthy canine salute treat. Right now, you can get 15% off your order at caninesalute.com with promo code booster. That's caninesalute.com. Use promo code booster for 15% off your order, and it goes to a fantastic cause. If you love animals the way we do, you definitely need to check this out. All right, we're going to get to donos in a second. But first, bets. Last night, one and one. We're just throwing stuff against the wall, seeing if it sticks right now. Tonight, give me Indiana State, Ohio State, and the NIT, both to win. That's a plus 101. And then UNLV and Seton Hall over 141. That's at minus 108. David! One and one as well. The Gonzaga women's team covered for me. Caitlin Clark and I did that game? not, that but game? they did move forward. They won by 10. Yeah, I heard she was fantastic. Referees. Yeah. Uh, hockey tonight. Panthers, money line, minus 130. Maple Leafs. Talking about Austin Matthew chasing the 70 goal mark. I want Maple Leafs tonight, minus 140. 0-2 yesterday. I mean, how are you up 30 points and lose? Celtics? Yeah, it's bad. They were up 30 and You're lost? You're up 30 and lost. That's why I don't bet the NBA. It's an absolute trap. It steals your money. All right. I'm, I'm taking the Flyers today. Uh, plus one and a half. That's going off at minus 150. I believe they play the Rangers on the road. And that's going to be a tough one, tough sledding. But I believe. And then also, give me the under six and a half for the Hurricanes Penguins game. That's going off at minus 120. All right. Baby Cone. He's going to go Caps minus 115 and the Preds minus. 140 Smashville. You already know what time it is. All right. All right, let's roll through these donations. Roll through them. Can you roll through them? Yeah, I'm going to roll through All them right, just, just like this with them. a $5 donation from Chase Mills. Been doing it my whole life. I'm doing the homework, fellas. Ah! Picking up the day one Nerfy picks. All right. I really like the Twins versus the Royals. Mm, what's the Pablo Lopez next? versus Cole Raggins. Two more days, the money gets made. Whoo! I love that. Let's go to a $5 donation from JT. Appreciate it, JT. So the runner couldn't just turn to one side and instantly get 15 more yards. I believe he's talking about the kickoff. Return. No, I think he's talking about the hip drop tackle. Um, uh, yeah, he's, I think he's talking about hip drop tackle. Yeah, well. so if the runner tackle. turns to one side to get tackled and it ends up being on the hip, like it's, then he would get a 15 yard. This is going to create more problems than it solves. It's going to create more problems than it solves. Let's go to a $2 donation from Tyrese. So Ty says, boys, boys, boys. Tyrese. Fourth and 31. And now this against Yale, it's tough right now. That's not even like the, the, the that's not even the beginning of it. <laughs> like again, outside, that's my whole point. You have some Auburn fans who are like, no, we're just nobody's saying anybody's mad at any of the coaches. Like, God, we just cannot walk and shoot. We're our own worst enemy. We're our own worst enemy. Like you have some some Auburn fans that are just ha they just want to be average or a little bit above average. How you get invaded? Yeah, like it's just I, it's like, part poison. of it just to like support whatever coaching staff is there. Like, let's just show our support and never criticize. And never criticize. Like some people are just above critique. Like as long as we don't have a, just a losing regular season, everything is okay. Man, miss me with tell that. the players that. Yeah, tell the players go that. Tell, Nobody the hurts players. more than the players. Hey, Y'all just coaches. be okay. But but they're the ones that got to do it. Like it's okay to say we love this coaching staff. They've done an incredible job. But we need to start playing better when it matters the most. And that's just the truth. I was going to five dollar donation from Ryan Gate, our resident Phil, uh, Phillies fan. Rest last night must have had money on the Iowa West Virginia game. A 30, uh, 35 foot, uh, thirty attempts for an advantage yeah. for Iowa from three. If played on a neutral court, would have been an upset in my opinion. Uh, it's it, it. I think there's some merit to the referees helped Iowa out last night. All right, let's go to a $5 donation from Steve's Trading Card Frenzy. What's up, Steve? Jake. Maybe. I just did a test donation to the GFM to make did sure work? everything works, and it went through. Can we give it another try? We'll give it another try, Stevie. All right, that's all the donations to the day. Appreciate everybody who sent in money. We're going to get to a poll. Which one seed loses first? UConn, Houston, North Carolina, or Purdue? Mm. I'm going to say they say Houston. UConn. 34%. 
yeah, got the fewest votes. You got zero <laughs> percent. Uh, Purdue. Let's see. There are four options. Purdue, fifty percent. All right. UConn, nine percent. Houston, twenty-five percent. North Carolina, twenty-five percent. And Purdue, forty-one. Wow. Per All right. See you hey. feeling us. Houston's my pick, man. Yeah. So they were twenty-five percent in the poll. Appreciate you guys joining us. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Got a great show for you tomorrow. Shout out to Barrett Salee as well. Uh, and, well, just like Jared's, <laughs> Jared's chance of being as big as Zach Eady in an elevator, we're going, going. Ooh. Nice job. Gone. That was a heck of a throw and catch. Sometimes you just got to tell the truth.